And now I'm going to try and clean this up just a little bit. So Y prime, Y prime is equal to, let's see, when I distribute a 1 through here, I just get the same thing. So X cubed plus X minus 3. Then I'm going to do this here, this here, this here, this here. Let me do that. I'm going to just do it in black up here so we can just get the answer. So it's going to be uh, 3x cubed. Then we're going to have plus 6x squared, then plus x, and then plus 2. But notice that we have a minus that's in front of that. All right? So that minus sign is going to have to distribute through to everything there, which is why down here I'm going to have negative 3x cubed, then minus 6x squared, then minus x, then minus 2, and then all of that over the denominator squared. Now, I'm not going to square that. I'm just going to leave it like this, and I'm going to clean up the top. Okay, in the top, I have some like terms here, x cubed here. Here's a negative 3x cubed, so that's going to give me negative 2x cubed. Ah. Sometimes my computer just has trouble keeping up. Um, and then now my x squared, I only have this, so minus 6x squared. And then my x terms, oh, they cancel, don't they? This x cancels with this x, so I don't have any x's. Then I have negative 3 and minus 2, it gives me negative 5. Then all over the bottom, the g squared. At this point, there's really not a whole lot more I can do. So I'm just going to leave it. Let's take a look and see the book. This came up with the same thing. They pulled a negative out. That's OK. Let's see. So they noticed all of these had negatives, so they pulled a negative out in front and turned them all to positive. That's fine. That is fine. Denominator looks good. OK. We're ready to move on. Unfortunately, I will need to erase this, because I've kind of already gotten into question six here. So there we go. Goodbye. All right, so here we go again. It looks again like we have a quotient, because you have a numerator, you have a denominator. So if I look at it that way, let me try and use my thinner pen here. The f will be the top, which is 2t. Notice my variable here is t. And then my g will be the bottom, which is 2 plus, notice square root t is still is the same as t to the 1 half. I do that because I know I'm going to take a derivative now. So derivative of 2t is just 2. Derivative here, derivative 2 is 0. And then this is 1 half t to the negative 1 half. Well, 1 half t to the negative 1 half. I'll just leave it like that. All right, so now we are going to do quotient rule. Um, I should point out that notice that in the original problem, they're calling the function f. And in my quotient rule, I'm calling a new function f. I don't want you to lose sight of the fact that I'm only using little f over here to help me with the formula. Um, it's not the same f that we're given in the problem. So you got to kind of keep that in mind. That it's, it's kind of bad notation to use f twice there. You could, if you want, come in here and use h instead. You know, But as long as you don't get lost, it's OK to just call it f over there. So my derivative will be okay, f prime, which is 2, times g, 2 plus, I'm going to just say, well, t to the 1 half, that's fine, minus g prime, which is 1 half, t to the negative 1 half times f, which is 2t, all over g, which is 2 plus t to the 1 half, all of that squared. All right, clean up time. So 2 comes through. So I have 4 plus 2. I'm going to change that t to the 1 half to square root of t. And then here, check this out. 
the 1 half multiplies times a 2, that's just a 1, so it's kind of gone. And then I have this power on t, and then I have a 1 here. I add those together, I get 1 half. So I just have a minus then just the t to the 1 half, which would be the square root of t. Then all of that over the denominator, which I'm going to rewrite the t to the 1 half as square root of t, but all of that squared. Now on the top, notice I have 2 root t take away 1 root t. That's just going to leave me a root t. So I have 4. I'm going to have plus 1 root t up there over 2 plus root t squared. Now be careful. You cannot just square each one of those, right? If you wanted to square this, you have to square the whole thing, which means you have to foil it. We can't start canceling crazy math like this and doing that. You can't do that. So we are pretty much at our answer at this point. Uh, let's verify it. wonder how much work they show. They probably show all the steps. Yeah, pretty close. So here we were, right there. Okay, next one. Actually, yeah, is this the last one, this page? Let me finish this one, I'm take a break. All right, so I have division. I'm going to call the top one f. That'll be 6x. Call the bottom one g. 7 minus cotangent x. The derivative of f is just 6. The derivative of g, well, the derivative of 7 is 0, so don't worry about that. Derivative, forget the negative is there for a second. Derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant x squared x, but then I have a negative, so it just becomes positive cosecant squared x. All right, now we're ready to use our quotient rule. So quotient rule tells me that I, my derivative will be f prime times g minus g prime times f, which is 6x. And just remember that the... Uh, the x here is trapped inside the cosecant function. You can't multiply that x times 6x and get 6x squared. That's a big no-no. Okay, all over bottom squared. I mean, sorry, uh, g squared. So 7 minus cotangent x and then squared. And I'll do a little cleanup here. Um, I'll just distribute through here like that. So we've got... Uh, 42 minus 6 cotangent x. And then here, you can't really do anything to this, so so we're just going to have a negative 6. I'll put the constant out front. Then cosecant squared x. Oh, 6x. Oops, forgot the x. Cosecant times cosecant squared x all over 7 minus cotangent x squared. Now, they put this as the answer, which is fine. All they did was they took this answer and they pulled a 6 out of everything and factored it out. No big deal. Same thing. So we're done. Break time for me. Back to work. I knew that was going to happen. My dog is at the door, scratching away. I should say my wife's dog. Okay, quotient rule. If this dog gets out of control, I might have to pause the video again. I'm sorry. Although it probably doesn't make much of a difference to you, huh? Just cuts in and comes right back, huh? All right, so we have quotient. Um, call the top, right, F. That's going to be X. The bottom, now check out the bottom careful here. I have x plus. A is a constant, so here's my constant. Now, I'm supposed to put it over x, but I know that to use the power rule, I need to bring that x up. So I'm going to write it as an x to the negative 1. That's a very, very important part of this problem. Now, let me get grab my derivatives real quick. 1. Now, be careful here. The negative 1 comes out, makes it a negative a. I subtract 1 x to negative 2. All right. So the derivative should be the derivative of f, which is 1, times g, 
which is 1 minus a, oh, no, that's not it. I almost put g prime there, times g. Okay, and then minus the derivative of g, I forgot to put my g prime mark there, that's why, is 1 minus a x to negative 2, and then times f, which is x, all over the g, which is x plus ax to the negative 1 squared. Ooh, this is ugly. Okay, distribute a 1 through here. That's great. Nothing changes. So I have x plus ax to the negative 1. Then distribute just an x through here and here. So, And notice also we have a negative sign. So whatever I do when I, when I multiply this times this, um, I get x, but then I subtract it, so that gives me negative x. And then when I multiply the x times this one, right, it gives me um, a negative a, but then I add the exponents. This x has a 1 on it. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So I would have negative a, x to the negative 1, but then the minus out front makes it a plus a. So I have plus a x to the negative 1 all over the bottom, x plus ax to the negative 1, all of that squared. Now, oh wow, those x's cancel. Isn't life great? Okay, and now these are exactly the same. We're adding them, so there's two of them. So I have 2ax to the negative 1 over um, x plus a x to the negative 1 squared. Now, you could write this as 2a over x over, so all I did there was I rewrote this right here. I dropped that down below the 2a. The denominator I could rewrite as x plus a over x squared. And again, all I did there was rewrote the x to the negative 1 underneath the a. Curious to see what they have. Y'all can probably hear that ridiculous animal, right? Well, they went even further. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to do a little more work then if I'm going to make it look like the back of the book, or back of the book, the solutions here. All right, good. This will be a good exercise. Okay, so at this point, um, I'm going to give myself a little room. I'm going to work it up here. Now, technically, on your handwritten test on your midterm and final, I would be happy at this point, okay, where I am here. But if we want to make this look like the book, then let's, let's work with a little more. And this is just a good exercise with algebra, you know. Um, notice on the denominator that if I wanted to put these two terms together, I need a common denominator, which means I need to rewrite x over 1 with an x on the bottom. So I multiply x on top and bottom right here. When I do that, I would get x squared over x, and then the other one would be plus a over x. So I can put the two uh, numerators together like this, and then I would have squared. So hopefully you agree with that. And now, um, what I could do is I could write 2a over x over x squared plus a squared over x squared. So all I'm doing now is I'm actually squaring the top and the bottom separately. And then here's the tricky part. Because I have an x down here in denominator, I have an x squared down here in denominator, what I can do is I can multiply by x squared on top and bottom. It's like multiplying by a 1. What happens down on the bottom is this x squared cancels out with this x squared. And then one of these x's cancels out with one of those x's. So I'm still left with an x up here on the top, which combines with my 2a to give me 2ax. And then over, the only thing left on the bottom is the x squared plus a squared. And that, I believe, is what they had. Let's see. 
there it is, 2ax over x squared plus a quantity squared. That's it. Another way, just so you can see it, that you could have done this step, might be a little bit easier for you to see, is to remember that um, complex fractions, division of fractions, same as multiplication of the reciprocal. So if I take the bottom and I flip it and I bring it up here, like this, that now it's gone because I flipped it up. Then this x squared becomes an x, and this x is gone, cancels. So you still get the 2ax over that bottom part. So either way, you get the same result. All right, so now we are going to go back to what we've done before, finding the equation of tangent lines to some curve at a point. To find the equation of tangent line, we actually need to come up with a slope. The slope's going to come from the derivative. So first, I need the derivative. So let's see if I can work a little bit faster here. Let's do, see if I can do this mentally. So here's my f, and here's my g. The derivative should be f prime, which is derivative of the top, times g, the bottom, minus the derivative of g, which is the bottom, derivative of bottom is 2x plus 1, times the top, which is x squared minus 1, all over the bottom, x squared plus x plus 1 squared. Holy crap, that's my, that, that is the slope of the tangent line at some given point. Now, we could try and clean this up. In fact, they do that here. They clean this all up and they get something. But really, if I want to know what's happening, what the slope tangent line is at, at this point, then I really want to know what happens when x is 1. So what I'm going to say is that the slope, right, the slope is going to be equal to, now I'm saying the slope at that point when x is 1. Just plug 1 in for all your x's. So two, 2 times 1 here, give me 2. And let's see, 1 squared is 1, plus 1 plus 1. So we get 3 there, so that's a 3. Minus, let's see, 2 times 1 here is 2, plus 1 is 3, so I have 3. And then over here we get 1 squared, which is 1 minus 1. Hey, 1 minus 1 is 0, so that's going to kill that one off. On the bottom, 1 squared is 1, plus 1 plus 1, I have 3, but 3 squared is 9. So what I get here is um, 6 over 9, which is the same as 2 thirds. So at that point, my slope is 2 thirds. And of course, once we know the slope, then we plug into our formula, which is this one, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 right there. So this is it. And then you can solve for y, which we've done that before, and you get this. All right, I'm like halfway through this assignment, crazy. All right, find the equation of tangent line of this curve at a point. So here's this curve called the witch, the witch of Maria Agnesi. And this is actually the curve. This is the one that they're talking about. So, um, <clears throat> well, I'm saying it looks like that. We have to pick which one of these they're talking about, but um, to find, again, the, the equation of tangent line, we need the slope, right? The slope's going to come from the derivative. So first, let me rewrite the function just so you can tell what it is. It's division because it's 1 over uh, 1 plus x squared. That's what that is up there. Now, let's talk about derivative. Now, we have a top. We have a bottom. Hmm. We use the quotient rule. The derivative of the top is 0, right? Derivative of 1 is 0 times the bottom, that's really not going to matter because 0 is going to kill it, minus the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is just 2x times the top, which is 1, and then over the bottom squared. Let's get rid of this whole thing because 0 is going to kill that out. I'm left with negative 2x over 1 plus x squared. Squared. Now, what we're interested in is what's happening when x is negative 1, and that'll give me my slope. So my slope, right, again, with x being negative 1, so I'm going into this and I'm plugging in x is negative 1, get negative 2 times negative 1 over 
1 plus, be careful here, negative 1 squared squared. So the numerator gives me 2. The denominator, negative 1 squared here is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, but 2 squared is 4. So we get 4. Here we got 1 half. And so the slope of my tangent line is 1 half. Now we can come up with the equation. I'll just throw it in here. 